Good evening, Nuri. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Fine, thank you. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. I see we we are dancing now, huh? <laughs> dancing. Advancing. Ad excuse me. We are advancing. Advancing. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. This level. Yeah, another level, right? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm exciting. Yeah, me too. But it, this time was a long time for waiting, right? Yes. It's like one month. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, good evening, Luis. Nice to see you again. Hey, good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? I everything okay. Good, good to hear that. Yeah. So tell me, what have you been doing? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, do you know, I, I told you in the, the last classes, I work um, at a project, right? A special project, right? Yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but um, my last project uh, finished. Um, I'm um, the first September. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first of ah, so only last week. Okay. Uh, for the moment, I am looking for a new opportunity, right? With ah, a, okay. A news, uh -huh, news project. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, in this moment, what are you going to do? Only relax for now. Yeah, I have only two two days or no three days uh, on vacation because my project finished uh, the first um, first September two thousand. Uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah, I I am relaxed. I take it is in my house. Uh -huh. That's good. It's important to be able, you know, just that's the life of the projects, right? You have one, you continue, and then another, and sometimes it's good, sometimes not. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Good. Okay. All right. What about the, anybody else? What else have you been doing? Me working, teacher. Working. Yeah. A lot of work. A lot of work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, good. Well, guys, as you know, this is going to be a little bit different because the course is the TOEFL course, if we are in the correct one. Um, the idea is learning a little bit about taking the exam and having it. So the first thing I'd like to know is how many of you are planning on taking the exam? Nobody wants to... I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna take it, but at least I'm gonna like make the best of the classes. Okay, okay, good. The The reason I ask is because you know that the tofu, what do you know about it? Hey, what have you, have you ever tried it? Do you know anything about it? Uh, the tofu, it, it maybe helped me and um when you move another country, teacher. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, TOEFL or TOEIC, I don't know what is the name, that is correct. Okay, okay. Well, they're a little bit different. Um, the main idea is that they're used to help you with academic purposes. Um, okay. TOEFL and TOEIC are both used mainly for universities or for studies. So if you want to work in another country, or you will need to prove your level of English in order to enter a university or program, that's where you're going to use them. That's the most, that's usually the idea of where you get them. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, it's really just a matter of uh, which one you're going to have. So uh, it's just like um, Avanzo and Pais. Okay. In the end, it's the same thing. Uh, you have to take one test in order to prove your level. So there are many different sections for it. There are four main sections. 
Um, there's the reading, listening, speaking, and writing section. Those are the main sections that you have. Let me share a little bit my screen with you guys so that we get a better idea of what we're talking about. Mm. Hang on. Okay, so this is what your course is going to look like. Uh, you should have access already to this. As you can see, we have four main sections. Each one is for points. So if you take the exam, the idea is to try to get as many points as you can. There is no, uh, there is not score only for one. Usually the universities or places choose, they have a global score. For example, you need 30 points or you need 450, depending on which one you take, the paper one, or if you take one that is digital. That's going to be a little bit different for each one. Now, the idea for this course is just to help you to get you an idea of how to do it and what are the practice exams for each one. Okay. Okay. All right. Before we begin and take a look at it, I have to play a small video from InSupport for you. Okay. So here's a small video from InSupport and then we continue with our class. Okay. El InSupport ha trabajado con un alto nivel de profesionalismo, pensando siempre en incrementar las posibilidades de crecimiento para la gente de nuestro país. Nos hemos dedicado a que a través de la formación se generen oportunidades para los salvadoreños y así cada vez más, en un mundo más competitivo y globalizado, siempre existan en nuestro país posibilidades de superación para todos. Miles de hombres y mujeres han logrado desarrollarse profesionalmente y han ampliado sus conocimientos y posibilidades laborales a través de los diferentes programas de formación que son parte del Sistema de Formación Profesional, el cual ofrece programas de formación para todos los niveles de recurso humano dentro de una empresa. Se ha incrementado productividad de muchas industrias y cientos de empresas a través de la capacitación y formación de cientos de miles de salvadoreños con programas como Área Técnica, ofreciendo cursos técnicos para mejorar el desempeño operativo y tecnológico de los trabajadores. Competencias Gerenciales, con temas de capacitación para complementar y actualizar conocimientos para áreas de gerencia. Inglés para el Trabajo, contenidos estandarizados del inglés para hacer a los trabajadores más eficientes y productivos en el desempeño de sus funciones. Mejora de Competitividad de las MIPES. Amplios temas de capacitación, específicos para micro y pequeños empresarios. Cursos cerrados y abiertos, tratando temas de capacitación para trabajadores de las empresas cotizantes de Insaforp. Insaforp Online, cursos online con el horario y ubicación que más convenga al usuario para la constante capacitación en múltiples temas y profesiones. Trabajando con el compromiso claro de ayudar al desarrollo del país y con un equipo profesional entregado a buscar oportunidades para nuestra gente, es que Insafor ha logrado tener un modelo de gobernanza y gestión ejemplar que tiene como base el diálogo permanente entre el sector empleador, laboral y el gobierno, formando a los trabajadores, capacitando a la gente de nuestro país. Es que transformamos la vida de las familias salvadoreñas, porque en Insafor trabajamos todos los días sabiendo que, a través del conocimiento, es que estamos formando un mejor El Salvador. Con el objetivo de formar en igualdad el Instituto Salvadoreño de Formación Profesional Insafor, presentó en el año 2017 la Guía para la Prevención y Erradicación de la Discriminación contra las Mujeres en los centros de formación fijos donde se desarrollan programas permanentes de formación profesional del INSAFOR, cuya elaboración contó con el apoyo de la Organización Internacional del Trabajo, OIT, y su objetivo a largo plazo es contribuir a mejorar las condiciones y oportunidades de acceso y permanencia de las mujeres en los procesos de formación profesional sin discriminación de ningún tipo. La guía pretende poner a disposición de INSAFOR y de sus centros colaboradores un instrumento que les permita identificar, conocer, prevenir, atender y erradicar progresivamente cualquier discriminación por razones de género contra las mujeres. 
Posteriormente, el Instafor desarrolló un plan piloto de implementación de la guía en tres centros de formación fijos y es así como surgen cuatro instrumentos fundamentales para la aplicabilidad de la guía, siendo estos manual de convivencia, protocolo de atención en casos de bullying y acoso sexual, lineamientos para la comunicación de los programas de formación con lenguaje inclusivo no sexista y la guía metodológica para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres. Dichos documentos fueron elaborados con el enfoque de derechos humanos y de género, estableciendo medidas que garanticen relaciones de respeto, igualdad y equidad entre todas las personas que forman parte y conviven en los centros de formación profesional. De esta forma el INSAFOR asume la igualdad de género como un principio transversal de trabajo, entregando a los centros de formación estas cuatro herramientas que complementan la guía para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres, a fin de que sean puestas en práctica en beneficio de las usuarias de la formación profesional. INSAFOR, formando en igualdad. Ok, there is the publicity. It's time for yes, us to continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the important is now you know about yeah. the corp and all the possibilities that they have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So as they I was say, the account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the same as other courses, always you can check your progress. The minimum is 80 to pass to the next module. And the same thing, after two sections, there is a test. So section two, you're going to have a midterm test. After section two, uh, we have section four, and you'll have the final test. Remember, in the midterm is unit one and two. The final exam is unit one, two, three, and four. Okay. 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 Any questions in this moment? No. Everything no. okay. No. All right. Well, then let's begin. We're going to learn a couple of things about the reading sections, and then we're going to be able to practice a little bit about those. About the reading section. The reading section on the TOEFL test measures your ability to understand written academic English. It is not necessary for you to have prior knowledge about the topic in order to answer the questions. Now, the idea is that they say you don't need to have prior knowledge. It's true, a lot of the information uh, to answer the questions you're going to find in the test, but you do need a lot of vocabulary. So you need to expose yourself and start reading a lot of different vocabularies. Here okay. we go. Challenges of reading. When we take the TOEFL test, we need to know some strategies that will help us overcome some challenges. For example, you need to be familiar with the type of questions. Pay attention to the number of questions, and skimming and scanning will help you deal with more difficult questions. Okay, she says skimming and scanning. Do you know what are skimming and scanning to help us with the TOEFL? No, in my case, no. No, okay. So the idea of skimming and scanning is that you read the questions in your exam, but you don't read the article. You don't read all of the exam. You look for in the mm -hmm. question, say, what is the meaning of this word? You look for this word and only identify that section. This, mm. is to save you, this is to help you save time in the test. Okay. 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 This is the idea. Or try to get a main idea of, for example, what is the article about? What is the mm. main idea of the reading? And then mm. you go quickly to do, 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 okay. in order to find okay. the information. Mm. What is the meaning of skimming? Uh, what is in the practice? Read fast or only title? No, no reading fast. It's only reading for specific information. And you know what it's like if when uh, you're looking for a, to a picture and they they tell you to look for 
for a cat, for example, inside a picture and you you like look like really fast all over the picture, that's what it is. Exactly. And you only look for the cat. You don't care about the other information. And scanning. That's where you try to find it. So skimming is, yeah. you try to Scan. go for all of it and scanning is the one with the picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. About the reading section. The reading section on the TOEFL test measures your ability to understand written academic English. It is not necessary for you to have prior. Wait, I think that one was the one we, we started off with. There we go. Welcome. This is TOEFL Preparation Course 1. In this course, you will find challenges of reading, about the reading section, two types of questions, and practices about the reading types. So the main thing is, let me go back a little bit, get a little bit better idea. So we're gonna look at challenges uh, about the reading, how to improve our ability to identify and the different types of questions that they have in them. This one seems a little slow, but okay. Here is an example of a question that we have. So we're gonna start off right now in negative factual information. Now, factual means information with actual information, the uh, things that are facts, uh, not things that you imagine, but things that are real, okay? Mm -hmm. Welcome to TOEFL Preparation Course 1. In this first course, we will show you two types of reading questions negative factual information questions and factual information questions. If you think you need to take notes, feel free to do so, or you may play this audio program as needed. First, we will show you negative factual information questions. Negative factual information questions ask you to recognize information that is explicitly stated in the text. This may include facts such as major ideas, supporting details, or definition, except that instead of only one answer being true, three of the four answers are true, and you have to determine which one is false. For negative factual information questions, look for the words NOT or EXCEPT in capital letters. Okay. Keep this step in mind. For the negative factual information questions, remember that you're looking for the answer that either isn't in the paragraph or directly contradicts information in the paragraph. Now let's try a negative factual question. Here's a paragraph about sports and its risks, and here is the answer. To begin with, you know it's a negative factual information question because of the word except in capital letters. So three of the choices are going to match information in the paragraph, and only one will not. Let's see how many correct choices we can find by scanning for keywords that appear in the answers, like mountaineers fall, risks, avalanches, and so on. We may also need to look for synonyms of these words. So if we scan the paragraph for some text about falls, that corresponds to choice A. We find this and it's a match. For choice C, we found that information here, where it talks about risks. Choice D is here, where it talks about skiers are swept away by avalanches, but there's nothing in the paragraph that talks about storms. So choice B looks like it might be the answer. Therefore, choice B is our answer. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Like mountaineers fall, risks. Let's take a look first at any questions you have about how to answer these questions. What are the techniques that they are telling you? What are some of the strategies to use? Let's see. How can I use skimming in this passage? 
you are looking for all of the ones that are risks. So you look for sports and the first words, only you're looking for activities. For example, uh, here, oh, boxers, kills. So all you're doing is going quickly through all of it and looking for the words that you want, anything related to sports. For example, here, motorcycles related to sports, uh, golf related to sports. This is your, the idea is that you're going through it, trying to identify all of the risks or dangers with sports. Okay. okay. That, that is a, a scheming technique, right? So exactly. So the technique is when you want, look at the question. When you have a, a reading, look at the question first. Mm -hmm. The question is, according to the passage, all of the following are risk, except uh, all of the following are risk in sport, mm -hmm. except. So, the storm, because the storm is no. Mm -hmm. He's not in sports. Uh huh. It, it, so yeah. here, for example, falls. Is there, you're going to look for these words, avalanches, mm -hmm. accidents, storms, and falls. And yes. the idea is, ah, okay. I find avalanches, avalanches, yes, because it says except, mm -hmm. right? Accidents, yes, because it talks about others. So all of them are, that's the idea. You don't need to read all of the article. You mm -hmm. only need to find which words are not present. Okay. In this case, the word not present is the storm. Okay. All right, but let's read it together to make sure it's we it's clear everything. Nuri, can you please read? Okay, teacher. Uh, almost all sport and outdoor leisure activity carry real risk. Swimmer drown, mountaineer fall, skier are swept away by avalanche, and boxer are killed by a blow to the head. A person's skill or experience is not warranty against disaster. In fact, the better an athlete is, the greater the temptation to break record or succeed, succeed in doing something that has never been done before. Danger, which tests nervous. Courage. 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 Courage and a skill is an essential element that add thrill and enjoyment to a sport. All through those who organize sport formulate, formulate their roles in a way to minimize them. Minimize. Minimize. Minim, minimize uh, the risk of injury and to ensure that medical assistance is readily available. No amount of caution can alter basic facts. Even the best trained horse may panic. Motorcycle gives little protection in a crash, and a hard driving, and a hard driving golf ball can go straight. Okay, good. Thank you very much. There are many words that are new for pronunciation and maybe the others. Now, as uh, we were talking about, and Luis asked, how are you going to use skimming? Well, in the beginning, only go quickly and you say, okay, oh, avalanches is here. So it's not, it's not correct letter D. Then we look another, oh, uh, we have falls. They already mentioned falls right here, mountaineers fall. So falls is not possible. Accidents, mm -hmm. ah, and then we look at the different, the different examples of accident. So it's not accident. So then quickly, we don't need to read all of the article five minutes to answer the question. Because remember the TOFU is time, is managing your time. Okay. It's not, it's not about, uh, I, let me analyze, let me think, no. TOEFL is not, it's an exam. It's not a daily life activity. It's not, oh, I, I don't finish. I do the report at five o'clock. No, mm -hmm. you don't finish. You don't finish. This is your problem. And okay. That's, that's the, the idea is the techniques you're going to learn in the course is to help you to become faster when you take the test. 
Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's watch the second part one more time so that mm -hmm. we can see how we use the techniques one more. Answer, there either isn't in the paragraph or directly contradicts information in the paragraph. Now let's try a negative factual question. Here's a paragraph about sports and its risks, and here is the answer. To begin with, you know it's a negative factual information question because of the word except in capital letters. So three of the choices are going to match information in the paragraph, and only one will not. Let's see how many correct choices we can find by scanning for keywords. That is the key. You listen, she said, except. That means three of here are going to be in the reading. One is not. You are looking for the one that is not in the reading. That's why these are fast questions, easier to answer. That appear in the answers, like mountaineers fall, risks, avalanches, and so on. See, risks, We may also need to avalanche. look for synonyms of these Risk. words. So if we scan the paragraph for some text about false, that corresponds to choice A. We find this and it's a match. For choice C, we found that information here, where it talks about risks. Choice D is here, where it talks about skiers are swept away by avalanches. But there's nothing in the paragraph that talks about storms. So choice B looks like it might be the answer. Therefore, choice B is our answer. It's okay? Okay. All right, let's try one. Here we go. We have the second one. We will now move on talking about factual information questions. They are similar to the previous type because they ask you to recognize information that is explicitly stated in the text. This may include facts such as mayor ideas, supporting details, or definitions. Factual information questions will have phrases like according to the paragraph or paragraph X answers which of the following in the question. Here's a tip for answering factual information questions. Don't automatically select an answer just because it contains words or phrases from the paragraph. Make sure you carefully evaluate each option to determine if it is correct. Okay. Take a look at sample of factual information questions. Go on reading the passage. Remember, factual information questions, look for only one right answer. Okay, this one we're going to do. So read it and give me the answer to this question. According to the passage, what problem did uh, Daguerre encounter? You have three minutes, okay. three minutes to read and make your answer. Yes. Alex, you got it? Yes, I okay. think so. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Zero two. Anybody else? Remember, this is the part of the TOEFL that is the most difficult. Time. You have to be fast. You don't have time to take and say, oh, this word, this word. No. You're looking to answer. 
what it looked for problems and that which problems did he find? It's A, B, C, or D. The others, which you don't care. Sixty seconds. Thirty seconds. You guys have your answers? Only two people? Ready, teacher. Three people? Yes, teacher, maybe. Four people? 10 seconds? Five? Okay, that's the time. All right, let's take a look and see how you did. Be careful when selecting your answer because three of the four answer choices misstate information from the passage or contradict information from the passage. One answer we can definitely eliminate is A because there's no mention in the paragraph of his pictures were all negative. Choice B is not mentioned at all in the passage either. Choice C looks like what is said here in this paragraph, that the chemicals continue to react and the pictures went dark, might be the information we need. Choice D is incorrect because it says that he found a way to reverse the black and white parts to make positive prints, so it is contradicting one of the choices. That leaves choice C, which is supported by the eighth line from the second paragraph. Therefore, C is the correct answer. Okay. <clears throat> Did you select C? Yes, mm. teacher. In my case, yes. No. In my, in my case, the beginning, no. In my case, no. Okay. But the, sec the second time, I don't know if he found a way to fix the image. No. 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 It's a, no. Not letter D because it says letter D. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. no, no. But the letter C is uh let me see. Is in the parties he found a way a way to fix the image. No. Ah, okay. So it's right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right here. When he looked at the pictures in the light, mm -hmm. the chemicals continue to react in the pictures when dark. dark. So here, letter C. Yeah. His mm -hmm. images would darken. They would continue to go dark. Is they would darken. Okay. Here, in eighteen thirty-seven, he found a way uh, to fix the image. Fix. So mm -hmm. the problem is not letter D. Letter yes. D no. Is he could not find the image. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So that is why it's important to know what you're looking for. Because many of you read all of the paragraph. You read here and you continue reading and continue reading and continue. You didn't need to continue reading. This is wasting the time in the exam. Okay. Because in the exam, I need this question only. I need to answer this question. I find the answer. Select next. Go to the next question. Okay. 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 All right. Let's take a look at inference and rhetorical purpose questions. Let's get ready now to study the other types of questions you may encounter on the TOEFL test. Inference and rhetorical purpose questions. Inference questions ask you to identify information or comprehend an idea that is not plainly stated in the reading passage. 
You can recognize inference questions because they usually include the words imply, infer, or suggest. Rhetorical purpose questions. Rhetorical purpose questions are similar because they also ask for information not plainly stated. This will ask why the author has presented a particular piece of information. As a tip, if you can't identify the correct answer immediately, one suggested way to approach these types of questions is to eliminate wrong answers. Let's have a look at a question. What can be inferred from the passage? Let's take a look at all the choices. Let's go over each option. Option A, the rivers from two Canadian provinces drain into the Mississippi River. Drainage areas in Canada are not mentioned. Option B, 31 states out of all the states in the United States have rivers that drain into the Mississippi. Option C, if only parts of some states have rivers that drain into the Mississippi, there are probably other rivers in other parts of those states that drain elsewhere. Option D, if the Mississippi extends to Canada and flows down to the sea carrying sand, silt, and clay, probably some of the silt the river is carrying comes from Canada. So what is the answer? A, B, C, or D? B. Okay, we got one for B. 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 D. D. Two Bs, one D. And the others, no answer. C, teacher. C, okay. Let's read it together. Alex, please read the paragraph. Okay. The Mississippi River in its tributaries from the world's for the longest river system to Canadian provinces and all of part of 31 states in the United States have river that drain in the Mississippi. As the Mississippi River flows down to the join the sea, its deposit, deposit sand, silt, and clay, building the Delta Seaward across Louisiana, shallow continental shelf, the oh. Delta Marsh, and Bangers. its bays, lakes, and sounds provide shelter and nutrients for North America's most fertile marine near city. Okay. Now, here's the difficult part. Most of the readings in the tofu are going to be things that you don't talk about in Spanish. It's, remember, you are applying the tofu, you are applying for English level university studies. Yes. That is the purpose of the tofu, is to be at academic level at a university student, is for Alex to go to California, to New York, to Harvard and be able to read and understand the class. Okay. Okay. That's why you don't need to understand the topic, but you have to have an extensive vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Because if not, you're going to say, ah, I don't understand here. I don't understand seaward. I don't understand base. I don't understand nursery. I don't know. I don't understand Mark. Yes. And it's going to be true. And it's going to be difficult for you to answer if you don't like to read. So if you don't like to read, you need to begin reading and reading and reading different articles. Now here, inferred means is not in the article. Inferred is that you understand. As an example, I see Jose Roberto. Jose Roberto is smiling. What can be inferred? A, he is happy. B, he is sad. D, he is angry. I didn't say he was happy, but for the information, you can understand A, he is happy. Here, according to this article, it can be inferred. This means is not exactly in there. Okay, now here, let's listen to how we answer. So letter D is our final answer. Mm, super easy, what was it? Letter D. Letter D. Some of the silt deposited in the Liana Delta is from Canada. They don't say it's from Canada, but here it goes, can, it says two Canadian provinces Canadian. and all, all. So the river begin with Canada and go down. 
So then it's logical that some of the material is from Canada. Mm -hmm. That is inference. There are 31 states, no. Why not? Because it specific says 31 states. This is not infer. Infer is that you have to understand from the context, not the context says. It's okay, the idea inference? Oh. It is difficult, this part. <laughs> oh, sure. believe me. The, this is going to be super difficult. It's going yeah. to be more difficult than going to the gym. Nunca han trabajado como ir al gimnasio, como van a trabajar aquí. Really? Yes, it's true. It's true. This is why the majority of the people in El Salvador don't pass the TOEFL. The majority don't pass. Okay. Because it's not only English. It's a skill for taking a test. It's abilities and it's time management. Okay. This is the most important. So let's go ahead. Gino, you have a question? Uh, it's not a question, but a, the, the, a comment that uh, in this kind of questions, uh, most of the answer uh, are like uh, wrong or far-fetched far and it will help you to, to de decipher which one it is. Because in the examples, the, the, they were the, the different answers stated that they were like 31 states or that there were no rivers in Canada, stuff like that. And that, that is just wrong. And I think it's easier to 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 read the answers and, and, and discard the ones that are, that are untrue. So mm -hmm. it, it would be easier to, to select the correct one. Yes. And a very important tip always always read the question first okay not the article because sometimes the article is very long but the question is very short okay so look first why you are reading what you need in this moment we're going to practice with our partners we are going to do the next exercise we're going to make groups with our groups, we're going to answer five questions. Here, negative factual information. This is section one reading. We have, as you can see, five questions. With your partner, you read and you answer. Okay? Okay. All right. Remember, it's super important, super important, not look in Google. Not look for the okay. translator. Yeah, yes. Not yes, look yes. for the interpretation because okay. this is not the reality. Okay. But no, because the reality is in the exam, you don't have Google. In yes. the exam, you don't have translator. Okay. You don't understand. You don't understand. This is for you to learn. I don't understand. I need to know more about this subject. I don't understand. I need to know more about this. Okay. That's the idea. Everybody has the Platform open is ready. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Okay. Let's get, let me get some information. Okay. okay.
Okay. So how did you do? Did you answer the five questions? Only one person said yes. Only Gino answer. What yes, in your answer? Sure. But I have wrong the number four. Okay. But, uh, sure, but but yes. uh, one of the answers is badly written in the fourth text. Let's take a look. Number four. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the fourth answer, it says the collection of oysters and yes. to collect is to gather, not, not the... But it's, it's on the weather. Remember, it's on the weather. Yeah, so the, the yeah, answer but, is the last one. Yeah, the, the answer is the last one, but but the collection of oysters is it is it like the same as to collect? Correct. Mm -hmm. So here where it says they collected the oysters is the collection of oysters. Mm -hmm. But the answer is the open. Is the one that they don't mention is open. That's right, the opening of the oysters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's take a look at how we did. All right, what was number one? What did you guys choose for number one? History. History books. Okay, history books. And number two? Photography. Photography. Lit photography? Yes, photography. Okay. Okay. What about number three? Farms. Falls. No, storms. storms. It's the same. Okay. Remember, we read. Yes. <laughs> and number four? The opening. The opening of the, the, opening? Of All the right. oyster. And the last one? Her beer. Her beer. Yes. Okay. Pretty good. So but you know, in, in my first time, I have a two room because I, I again, I, I read again. Okay. In All my right. first time. Mm -hmm. It's no problem. In in the class, that's the idea. We can practice. In the exam, only one opportunity and to go fast. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for connecting. You can see the class is going to be a little bit more difficult in the listening, the reading, the techniques, but we're going to practice together. And tomorrow we're going to continue to improve our skills for taking the exam. Okay. 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 Right. Bye, bye. 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 See you. See you. Bye. 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 See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.